I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm great. How can I help you today? Can I have two large double doubles <laughs> and an angel cream donut? Okay, anything else? That's all. Sure, it's gonna come to 540. I'll see you at the window. All right. Click the bell to join Hashtag Nation. You want to try that one again? Chuck Christopher. Chuck Christopher. Uh, how do you see the wide receiver position playing out? Do you see Foster and Jones outside opposite Brown? This goes back to what I said before. You remember? You say a lot of things, Mario. I do. Uh... <clears throat> what they paid Brown and Beasley, it's almost like parallel. Yeah. They're expecting both of them to contribute the same into the offense. I mean, you look at the number of times this team threw last year, and it is a little bit of a surprise that they added so many wide receivers. Yeah. You know? So. It'll be 30. Give them a three year deal. They can get out of it next year. Right. Uh, with minimal penalty. Right. Beasley's is four. Yeah. They can get out of his after the second year. So maybe I'm they think the slot is going to be more of a value. Which is, has been going up. I'm not as big a John Brown as a lot of other people, but I think that be, that comes from the, well, you, you couldn't get the ball fed to you in Bruce Arians' offense, so you can't fool me with this cloak and dagger. Like, I know he's fast. I know he's got skills. Yeah. But, I mean, he was he was uh, consistently hurt in Arizona. Come on. He goes to Baltimore, which never throws the football anyway. I don't know what he was thinking going to Baltimore. They don't throw the football. Well, I know you said he, it wasn't that he couldn't get opportunities in Arians' offense. Arians, he was a young player when he went there. That hurt him. Yeah. Because Arians hates the young guys. He sure does. That's one. Two, he had Jerron Brown, J.J. Nelson, Larry Fitzgerald, and insert tight end here of the guys they had before him. You know what I mean? That's So he was, he was kind of like a... Well, David Johnson was David Johnson and was Larry there, Fitzgerald. Yeah. Well, no, I, I'm saying that at the end of his tenure in Arizona, oh, yeah, David yeah. Johnson soaking up all you know a lot of those receptions. Yes. Yeah. So, so I get it. I, I like it for the fact is if if you said to me the Bills need an outside threat to open up things underneath, mm -hmm. and you sign John Brown, that does that. Okay, you've fulfilled that need, but don't expect this guy to have 125 catches next year. Right. Don't expect Beasley to either. I could see multiple. I could see three guys on this offense having fifty catches. Well, I, yeah, it doesn't. It, it, it wouldn't surprise. I don't see one guy going above the other one. But, but we've talked about this. We talked about this on the previous episode. Would you rather have a number one and then you know three number threes? Or would you ha rather have a whole team of number twos? I'd have a, I'd, I'd rather have four twos. I don't. I completely disagree with that. The reason they're twos is because they're considered dimensional. You can block out facets of their ability to be. How many? Effective. How many twos can you block out though? Is my point. How many quarterbacks you got? That's how many you can block out. You're running nickel half the time anyway. You can block out. You, you know. You're telling me that they're that consist on a consistent basis every week. I'm going to face. Four twos defensively. Four two number two quarterback. Teams run nickel linebackers, which are big safety settings. Well, I mean, I, I don't I don't like the whole. We'll get a lot of guys in here, and we'll just see how it goes. Thing like I, I'm not a big fan of the. We're just going to go with all these guys. They're all players you've heard of before, so that must be good, right? Okay, yeah, that's our receiver group now. It's, I'm not, I'm not, I don't love John Brown. I don't. I don't love John Brown. If John Brown gets 55 catches for me, I'll be awake. If he gets 40 catches for me, I'll be awake. Okay. Oh, man, I'm so bad at this. 40 catches is a little low. Uh, if, can we get, can we'll the over under at 49. Okay. Yeah. You're taking right. the over. Yeah, I'll I'll take the under. You're taking the under. Under 49. John Brown, 49 catches. Under 49. 49 or under. 
You're taking the number 49 too? 49 and under. And under. No problem. I'll leave the bet, stipulation of the bet in the comment section. He says he's gonna, he has less than 49, 49 and under. I'll have greater than 49 because that's three catches a game. You think he's gonna get three catches a game? I don't think he's gonna play 13 games. Wow. Okay. History so now, tells me. Let me go by your, the, the ski offense. All right. I'm going into a game with the ski offense, which means I have one number one yeah. and three threes. Yeah. I got four wide receivers. Okay. I'm going to play. I have a lockdown, shutdown corner. Yeah. He's going to stay on him the whole game. Yeah. All right. Then I can shift coverage to the other threes. You're not going to complete 15 passes on me all, all day. However, in my system, you go into it, you have four twos. You can spread them out. The defense has to decide who's going to get the ball. You can't shift coverage one way or another. And if you do, the other side is going to kill you. However, your system and mine both depending on if we can run the damn ball. <laughs> <laughs> when I look across the board, right, I, I don't see Brown being a major player. And, and there's a couple reasons why. A lot of that plays into Josh Allen's tendencies. Right? So Allen likes to look downfield once plays break down. John Brown is not a contested catch guy. So you can't ask that of him. Because he's not winning that he's not winning that contest. So if you're expecting John Brown to be able to pick up the scrap deep as the play breaks down, it's not gonna happen. That's not the type of play. He doesn't contribute to your team in that way. That's why he is a number two. Okay. Because he's not gonna be he's not gonna I never play said once he was the play breaks one. down. No, I'm just but saying that he's an outside threat. Right, no, I understand. But that's he, he's not going to win contested catches. You have to throw it to a point, right? Well, then again, I don't remember. Look, just real quick, I don't remember Foster contesting anything. Foster had trouble reading the ball over his shoulder last year, so Foster had trouble getting. And Brown doesn't have that problem. Brown doesn't have that problem, right? But Foster, he's not a contested catch guy either. No, I know. But I'm saying he was wide open with the way that the system is run and how Allen is elusive with his feet. You can't play man. Right. You try to play zone, mm-hmm. and that's where guys are wide open. Mm-hmm. The guy, you can get guys in the windows and, and in that. But if you try to play man and you're fearful of Allen running, that'll drop the safety down, and a guy like Brown can get wide open mm-hmm. is my point. That's all. So, Beasley, on the other hand, I love. I want to see him get a 105-mile-an-hour fastball. I would not. It's you got to be one hell of a man. To want to have to run across the middle for a Josh Allen fastball seven yards away. I saw Calvin Benjamin in training camp take one off the chest, and that's, I think, the moment he checked out of being a Buffalo Bill. Is he even Dan- Danny DeVito from Always Sunny? Nope. Beasley. Oh, man. If, if, if Cole Beasley doesn't break a finger this year, I'll be surprised. But I like Beasley. That's that's the type of player that this team really needed was somebody who's savvy at getting open. Because last year they generated a lot of guys getting open with, you know, behind the line of scrimmage, you know, movement and like you do the the Jets to McKenzie and like you had to generate guys in, in short distances to get open. That's what Beasley's money is. Yeah, that, mm, uh, I'm not high on Beasley. Really? I'm not as high. Okay. A lot of people are. Like, I understand how talented the guy is and how he can get open in the slot. Now, I think of him as that this this team is, is, is littered with insurance policies. And Bean does it when he, he wants to go draft somebody, he wants to go sign somebody, he'll get himself a couple guys. He'll sign a couple guys first to make sure he has those so he can go out, go out and get another guy. This offense is contingent on certain plays, certain play concepts that you want to open up for Allen. And if those concepts aren't there, what is the best thing for him? If you're not going to have a tight end as a safety blanket, Cole Beasley is one of the best safety blankets you can have because of what you just said. He can right. get open. Right. I'm not saying he's a 100-catch guy. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying – I'm like I said, he's going to be in the I, 50 range. But, again, it's you're asking you know a receiver to get 100 receptions in this offense. I can't, I can't promise you that would even happen ever. Like, under any circumstance. I mean, if Luke Falk was in this <clears throat> offense, I know McCoy would. Because <laughs> all he does is throw it over Well, and that's another part of the game that, we, that we're that we not accounting for, right? Is 
the running back portion of this, but I, I want to get back to Zay Jones. Yes, let's talk to Jones. I think I'll just say it quick, quickly for you, so you don't have to repeat yourself. Yeah, I, I, you know you get tired of repeating yourself. Mm-hmm. John Brown allows you to move Zay to the slot. Which is <laughs> the best. Right, but I mean that's so in four, possible. but in four wide sets because you're putting Beasley in the slot on three wide sets. Which one? Who is right. better blocker, Beasley or Jones? Uh, well, let's look at the run production from Dallas versus the run production from the Bills the last two seasons. You can't do that. I. What else are we supposed to compare to? What? You got Zeke there with those mammoth linemen that have been grading out, like, top five for years. The Bills didn't grade out top five. So there's other factors at play here, Mr. PFF. <laughs> Just saying. That's the, but that's you got the, a point. That, yeah, yeah but that's the comparable, right? The, the easiest way to look at that is, okay, so... How did Dallas run the ball last year? How did the Bills run the ball? Well, Dallas ran the ball significantly better. Beasley must be a better blocker. Does logic lead you to that conclusion? Well, um, the logic will say to me also that Beasley isn't that good at getting wide open because they got Zeke there and everyone's worried about the run. No, I'm just saying. We're just being, I know we're being clowns right now, but that's that's the thinking that that's right. where it leads you. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you're right. Go ahead. I mean, I've seen St. Jones and run blocking, and he's fine. He's, he's fine. Would you say serviceable? I think St. Jones is serviceably fine. Because we were spoiled with Robert Woods. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, it was so great to watch him just absolutely abuse people. Manhandle. In the game. <laughs> abuse people in the wrong game. It was great. He was awesome. Um, he was like a steamroller out there. He was, oh, I loved Robert Woods. If I could be afforded another gift, I feel like Dr. Evil. Would... Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I love, 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 love Robert Woods, and the team definitely missed him in that respect. But um, Zay Jones again is more effective in the slot. But you just signed, you just paid a slot receiver <clears throat> quite a bit of money, and they're not even the same profile of slot receiver. So it creates a real interesting four wide set because you have a guy who could who could play on the outside. Foster could play on the outside. If Brown gets hurt, Foster's going to play on the outside. That's going to be that's the move because you're assuming. I'm sorry if if uh, um, I like Foster in the slot and say on the outside in four wide receiver sets. By the way, because I think Foster is just a more dangerous player on the outside. On in a four wide receiver slot in the slot. Foster in the slot. I think Foster in the slot is more dangerous than Foster on the outside in a four receiver slot. I think you do that. You're, you're trying the, to abuse that that outside linebacker. Yeah, if a team's coming in yeah. thinking that Foster's on the outside, you move him to the inside. That's why I said, I mean, and we're, we're by default, we keep saying the, the starting four in a four wide set as of right <clears> now <throat> is until, until they show us something differently, mm-hmm. it's going to be Foster, Jones, Beasley, and Brown. Right. But – Sills, a lot of people are high on Sills. A lot of people are high on Williams. A lot of people are high on... They have options, though. That's the craziest part. Yeah. They do have options of what they could do with this team. Because any of these combinations of wide receivers will give you a different look, and, and it'll, it'll make the defense... Wait, what are they going to do? They yeah. show. They came out in four wide before, and they did this. Mm-hmm. They came out in four wide with, with totally two different these, personnel. Exactly. Yeah. So, how many are they going to carry on game day? I mean, you put... You put a four wide set. Let's just say, for instance, you put Andre Roberts and Isaiah McKenzie in the game. You get those linebackers are gonna be yelling reverse before well, the plays even. And called. that's a great point. Andre Roberts is likely gonna make this team, so you have oh, yeah. to assume that if you're carrying seven, let's just say the Bills are gonna carry seven wide receivers, which is a ton. Yes, that's a lot. Let's just say seven wide receivers. Well, you're right? offsetting. You're offsetting special, those special team. teams with wide receiver, right. So let's say you're going to carry seven wide receivers. I really think Andre Roberts is going to make this team. You have to figure he's going to play at least some snaps on offense because of the type of player that he is, yes. right? So Andre Roberts makes the team. Robert Foster, I do believe, is going to make the team. A lot of fans think that's money in the bank. I can't promise you that. I can't. I can't promise you that. Yes. So Robert Foster likely makes the team. Um, obviously, Brown and Beasley are on the team. Right, but now you start getting into a little bit uncharted territory because mm-hmm. you have you have a bunch of guys, right? So yeah. who are your last three? If you had to pick three from the remaining, who are your last three, Ugh. and why? What about them makes them stay? 
I'll go first. Duke Williams makes this football team because he gives you that contested catch piece that you don't have. You don't have another player on the roster anywhere close to him. Foster's the next biggest receiver at 6'2". And, and Duke Williams is only a little bit bigger than Robert Foster. Yeah. Just a little bit. Weird, too, right? Yeah, you don't think of Foster as being that big, though, right? He is. But Foster is not a guy who's going to go push you around. Duke Williams has to be that kind of player to make this football team. So I think Duke does make this team. So there's, there's my one. What do you got? Agree or disagree? I have to agree. I, I, I because because of what he offers you. Uh, I'm gonna get two other guys. I'm gonna add the other two that make it purely for a special teams and b business reasons, which is Jones and McKenzie. Special teams, slot dynamic. Yeah. And you still have a two more two more years of controllable deal with Jones. Mm-hmm. I don't think they let that go. I think because this team, and it's not it's not a detriment to them when we say that they're stubborn. Only with Deion Dawkins would you say that. <laughs> if you but, think they just, there's a second round pick yeah. of this regime, yeah. they're going to still bang their head against the wall until he works. So you got Roberts, Foster, Brown, Beasley, McKenzie, Williams, and Jones. Would that be a hateful seven to roll into the season with? No. If you, like what you said, the three guys that are tied up are McKenzie, Sills, and McLeod. They're all connected on, okay, the other two will go to practice squad, right? If you can think of some combination where, hi, these four guys, okay, over here at practice squad is really, these four don't. This guy is a controllable contract. That's where the business sense comes into Right. Because you can slide McLeod and Sills to the practice squad. You can also slide... Foster to the practice. Squad. Yeah, you know, if in the system they, they're going to run, everyone is equal. And if Brown and Beasley's contracts don't tell you that that they're going to be equal contributors, if the, everything being level, where can we move guys that we can keep all? That's all. That's that's where it's coming from for me. But who who was your other two? Did you agree or no? Because I saw your a sort of look on your face when I said McKenzie and the Jones. The Zay Jones things get me. And here's, I know, I, I agree with you 100% that this team is stubborn about their draft picks. <laughs> I agree with you 150%. Um, but the rubber has to meet the road for Zay Jones. Zay Jones has to show that he, could be, that he could be the leading receiver on this team to make it. I really do believe that. He's got to show that he should be on the field downs one through three. Wow. Early. Because if he doesn't, they've got other options that they might not want to lose. You know, and like you look at it, and if you cut say Jones, he doesn't have practice squad eligibility. So if you cut him, you're cutting him, and that's it. He's going back to the rest of the league. But then you look at what he gives you. Can you replace what he does? I mean, I can't say that. I understand it takes a while for wide receivers to get it in the NFL. It takes a long time for receivers to really understand how pro concepts run, but there's some things that St. Jones does on the field that are just head scratchers. And they're just habits that aren't going to be broken. So if, I, if I'm put up against the wall and I choose between Duke Williams and Zay Jones, the devil you know and the devil you don't, in this case, I'm taking Duke Williams over St. Jones. If I, if I had to be put up against the wall and pick one of those two guys to make the roster, Zay Jones or Duke Williams. And understand, this hurts me to say, because I was passionate about Zay Jones coming to the Bills. I remember that. I was, this was months, months and months I wanted Zay Jones. Yeah. I, I have to say that Zay Jones, I would have to have, have believe, has created a problem for himself at one Bills drive to where you would look at other options. Besides, if you have a quarterback that can throw the ball 80 miles an hour, do you really want somebody to catch the ball like this right there? No. He's trying to split the one. Yeah. Uh, let me just kind of throw this out there. It's probably for another episode. But I do love David Sills. I do. I do love David Sills. But he's going to be fun. Yeah. I he's hope gonna, they play he's going to be pre- controversial. I hope they play him in the preseason so we get a look at it. But I can't be convinced they're going to. Because if he doesn't play in the preseason and they, they wave him, 
they, they're trying to slide into their practice squad. But if they want him to play, be a part of the if he plays a lot, that tells you the level of contribution he's going to make to this team immediately. Yeah. Um, do you think that's why there was such an onus to get so many linemen in here? Because the Bills, okay, they drafted some tight ends. Great. They had Chrome. All right. Do you think that because they added so many linemen, that gives them the tips their hand that they want to run a lot more four wide sets? Wide yeah. receivers. Look at the guys they brought in. Pass protection, pass protection, pass protection. You brought in uh, a damn near 40 Frank Gore to keep your quarterback upright in pass sets. Which, I mean, which then doesn't make seven wide receivers on the roster for a game day. Yeah. yeah. Remember when the Bills came in with four wide, wide receivers last year? Oh, that was fun. They only had four active. And it was, uh, let's go back. Hold on. The four that were active for that game were Kelvin Benjamin, <coughs> Andre Jones. Holmes. What? Zay Jones. And uh, Ray Ray. <laughs> it might have been Ray Ray McLeod. <laughs> yeah, it might have been Ray Ray McLeod. I always do this to us. I know. <laughs>